Hey YouTube, today we're gonna make a kit. It's a Pixie 40 kit from China. And the reason why I got this one is because it comes with a nice little plastic case. Uh, there's no instructions or anything with this, so we just gotta figure it out. Obviously this is the case bit side pieces and hardware to put it all together. So for now we're just gonna solder it so we don't need this. There we go. This is a pretty nice little circuit board. I guess we're just gonna have to guess where things go. go. Good old Kester 44. This is an LM386. This is a little amplifier. Pretty typical chip. It's a little drive like a little 8 ohm speaker. It's probably for some sort of audio output. Got a bridge rectifier here. Crystal. 7.023 megahertz. So resistor. These are inductors. Hopefully all the same value. Uh, of course not. Capacitors of various values, jumper or something. Resistors of different values. Okay, hmm. I think we can figure out where the big components go. It's pretty simple, but the values and diodes and things like that um, might be a little trickier. I wonder if these are all the same. No, these are not all the same either. So we're gonna need to, we're gonna need to find a schematic. Otherwise, uh, this isn't gonna work. All right, I think we're gonna have to get the schematic to figure out the rest of this. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I found a schematic that may or may not work. The only reason why I chose this one over the other several uh, schematics that I found were uh, the bridge rectifier up here seemed to match the circuit. Um, this jumper seemed to match the circuit. The LM386, yeah, and the correct amount of inductors and things like that that are on the board that uh, are showing up here. So first thing we'll do is we'll just start identifying some of these components. Um, these are the inductors that I have in my hand. I have over here a cheesy Chinese tester machine. Um, I don't know if the camera can grab it or not, but what it does is it just measures inductance, capacitance, resistors, and stuff like that. Um, and I don't think it's very accurate. So what we can do is just for fun is we can measure stuff and then read the color bands on each one of the individual inductors um, and then figure out where they go into the circuit. Also, uh, I found a pair of uh, uh, side snips or dikes as I like to call them over here. So let me just clean up some of these old joints. And that's about as good as it's gonna get. Some of the other blobby stuff on the bottom of here, those are the those are the big connectors for um, the mechanical stuff for you know this this potentiometer and the uh, this B and C connector right here. So uh, yeah let's start with the inductors and just start measuring things and we'll figure out where they go in the circuit. And again um, this little machine here isn't very accurate. You know we'll, we'll probably go more by the uh, the color bands obviously but it's a good sanity check. Uh, for when or when you can't remember. All right, so let's see what this one says. 0 0.8 microhenries. And of course, our schematic is in millihenries. This is microhenries. Okay, 0 0.8. And I'm just going to measure all of them. 0 0.02. And I'm wondering, uh, there's only three inductors in the kit, so um, let's do I lose the last one. This one's just saying 15 ohms. It's probably the lower value one uh, on the schematic here. Okay, so going from the schematic, the largest one should be L3. And I'm just gonna drop this in L3 on the board here. I think there's markings on it. You know, I haven't even really looked at the board that much. Uh, L1, L2, L3 goes between the base of Q2 and top of C9, C4, and L3. 
get the soldering iron heated up and we'll do some joints. And we have a couple other things. We've got a bunch of resistors here, a couple of capacitors and uh, some electrolytics and things like that. All right, I'll be back in a minute. Okay, I'm back. Uh, I just had to stop for a little bit. What I've been doing is I've been using this little ch uh, Chinese tester here to measure the capacitors that came to the kit. There are numbers on them, and honestly, it's been a long time since I've been buying and looking at capacitors, and I don't really remember what these are in terms of, you know, 471, 473s, 101s, 102s, 103s, 104s. What I've done kind of off camera is I've actually added in several of the capacitors and resistors already because it does take some time to measure them, reference the schematic, and then find where the location is and solder it in. I've just been grabbing a capacitor, sticking it on here, and then measuring it. 444 picofarads. That, that's probably closer to 470 because that's what the schematic calls for. And this number right here is 171, I'm sorry, 471. And there's only one more of these, and I'm assuming this is also going to be a 470 uh, picofarad, or puffs as my uh, old mentor used, used to call them. Yeah, so close enough. And then the last one, this has the, um, this should be uh, 47 nanofarads, because uh, that's the only capacitor that's left. So let me just measure this. Yeah, 32. And again, this, this thing isn't that uh, accurate, so yeah. All right, put this in C9. The silk screen is a little bit hard to read on this board, but it is readable. So C9, wherever you are, go in here. And I also, I haven't put any of the electrolytics in here as well, but I, I don't think there's Looking at the schematics, there's only a handful of the electrolytics, and those should be, those are, you know, you can read the side of those, whether they're 10, micro, 10 microfarads or whatever. Again, okay, these are actually easy to read on the, on the side. I'm just kind of curious if, I was measuring some of these and what the markings were on the side didn't actually say what they were uh, when I measured them. I should probably be using an actual low meter, but it's actually in my car, so I don't, I don't like about to get it. So that's 10K, all right, straight 10K. Referencing the schematic over here, uh, my 10K resistor goes in position R5. Definitely 1K. And again, by looking at the schematic, R3, my 1K resistor will go into R3. Okay, so that's most of the small passives uh, that are in the kit. I'll save that for my weed bag. And we just have a few more left, but let's get these soldered in. Okay, got everyone. Do a little clean up here. Okay, let's go into this bag, which we haven't really gone into yet. First thing you notice in here is there's a big resistor. It's like it might be a 50 ohm. Uh, that might be the load. You can maybe just patch this um, directly to this BNC port right here when messing with it on the scope, uh, which I'll do in, I guess, in another video. Let's see what we got in here. Yeah, there's two diodes. Uh, these are easy to identify. These are just, um, this is a 1N, uh, 4, 41, 48, or 191 or something like that. Um, this should just be like a 4001, just general purpose. Couple uh, electrolytics here, resistor, two transistors, and uh, the jumper. These will probably be the easiest ones to put in. All right, so board should have markings on it, which way it goes. D3 is actually this guy, which is a 1N, 4148. There's a mark on there to show you which way the anode goes, so that's easy. And uh, we got the big 4001. The schematic here, that's just uh, to the crystal. Okay, so it's D2. Just thing left, uh, D1, I wonder what that is. Oh, D1 is the big uh, rectifier right here. Let me just solder those in real quick. All right, it's starting to look like a little radio. All right, so we got four electrolytics here, 105 degrees. No, these are not terrible caps. 100 uh, microfarads, and these are probably tens, also 10. Okay, so what we gotta do on the schematic is find the 100 microfarad. So it's not that one, it's not that one. The 100 microfarad looks like it goes like right up at the top. This is the power filtering, so that makes sense. Uh, CP1 is the 100 microfarad, and everyone else is the 10 microfarads. So we can just drop these in kind of without paying any attention to where they go, except for the polarity of them. Obviously there's the negative side and it's clearly marked on the board which way it goes. So CP1 is probably over here by the, by the power jack. Then the rest of these lytics just drop in because they're all the same according to the schematic. Pay attention to the polarity. All 
right, now the only thing left are these transistors and this jumper. Let me just put the jumper in real quick. This looks like it just turns on uh, whether or not there's the speaker or not. So, or the key. Maybe it's a side tone thing? I'm not really sure what that's for. It connects to this LED, so I'm guessing like when you, when you key down, this LED blinks and this little beeper beeps. Not really sure. back to the schematic here there's two transistor devices q1 is a 9018 and q2 is a and i have no idea what that is um, and i know the camera's not going to be able to see this but i don't believe there's different markings on here oh there are and I, I, and again i'm not familiar with these types of transistors but this is 9018 which would be q1 and this one is a uh, eight something five zero which is probably that one clearly marked on the board there's a little outline let's just spread these legs apart So it looks pretty. Last transistor. I think that's it. There's no more parts left. So theoretically, we should be able to light that thing up with a 9 volt battery, put it on 40 meters, and perhaps hear something. I guess what we'll do next is we'll just work on the case. Okay, so here's the little case that it came with. The, uh, you can get these kits for pretty cheap. This one was $6.15. Uh, the other ones are a little cheaper, but they don't include this swanky little case. And it looks like it's just laser cut plexiglass. It's pretty nice. Comes with a box full of hardware. We'll just have to figure out how this goes together. These guys look like feet. This looks like a bottom. If I had to guess, it'd probably go something like this. So there we are, super pixie, I guess what that's what the S stands for. Kit with a little case, all assembled, put together from China. I uh, haven't powered it up yet, but for the $6.15 that I spent from China shipped, it's a pretty good deal. I think the hardest part was figuring out which capacitors uh, went where, but that wasn't really a big deal, and getting the uh, protective film off this plastic case. Now the case is probably gonna have to come off again because I'm gonna wanna get in there and poke around with my scope to see what's going on with the actual circuit there. We'll do another video and maybe I'll take this up to a summit um, and see if I can uh, at least send out my call sign and see if I can get picked up off a reverse beacon. That's it. Thanks for watching.